Yes, let's go into the word. Okay, I want you to go to Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13 onwards. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to 10 virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. This is a parable of the end times. This is a very prophetic parable in a sense that it doesn't talk about the times when Jesus was. It talks about the time that we live in. The first thing, Jesus spoke about 10 virgins. The word virgin is symbolic of a person who is kept pure from the world and is joined to Christ. See, Jesus could have used any other terminology, but he used a virgin because you see, in those days, a virgin was, was betrothed to a man. And then he would come after some time and get married to her. So this is symbolic of our relationship with Christ. We are betrothed, we are engaged to Jesus. And one day he will come and then it will be the church, the bride of Christ meeting with the bridegroom. Come on, hallelujah. So this is, this is a parable for the end times and it's for us today. Listen very carefully. The second point, write it down. It says, who took lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. In other words, they wanted to meet the bridegroom. They could have taken anything else. They could have taken a makeup kit. Don't you think women of those days did not know makeup? I've been to Jordan, okay? And uh, I met some of the sisters over there and they say, there's a type of mud they used for putting things on your cheeks. They took lamps. Everyone say they took lamps. Now this is prophetic. If you want to have an encounter with Jesus, there is one thing you need church. You need the word of God. You know, David wrote in the book of Psalms, Psalm 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The thing is that if you want to know, if you want to grow in your relationship with Jesus, 10 people can come and lay hands on you and you'll remain the same. But the moment you start getting into the word of God, you will start knowing Jesus like never before. But many of you sit in God's presence without even the word of God in your hand. That's why you can be deceived. Tell your neighbor, you can be deceived. Yes, you can be deceived. You, you can be led astray because you don't have the word. Many of you, you, you know, God has kept you alive. And some of you have not even read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Not even once in your lifetime. Think about what I'm saying today. I was in my room and the Holy Spirit said, tell the people over here. This is what they need to hear. Tell your neighbor, you need to hear. Not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Some of you are not growing in your walk with God. You love Jesus. You love Jesus. You know where he was born. You know his mother. You know his father. You know his cousin brothers or whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't know. But you don't know the man. You don't know Jesus. There's one thing. If you want to have an encounter with Jesus, the bridegroom, you need to have the word of God. This is the thing that will put you up separate from the people. Church, I don't know how to say this, but David was a king. You know what he said? He says, your word, O oh Lord, makes me, makes me, it makes me wiser than my enemies. Today, I pray that if you get nothing out of this meeting and if you hear only one thing, you will come back with a testimony. May every day, I, I, I am a man of God, may every day of your life become a miraculous testimony. Hallelujah. You see, there was a woman called Mary. Bible scholars tell us that she was maybe around about 13 to 14 years of age. A simple woman. And an angel from heaven comes and has an encounter with this simple girl. You know what she says? I like what she says. She says, let it be done to me. Not according to the decree of the king, but according to your word. Hallelujah. She gave preeminence to the word church and we Christians today, we don't have the word. The Muslims, they will read their Quran like anything. I've seen 10 year olds, 7 year olds repeat verses, memorize sections. But I tell you, Christians don't know the word. This is not to criticize anybody, but to encourage you to go to and read the word. Can I have a good amen church? This is what it is. This is what it is. I was in London. I was meeting some high and mighty guys. Some, some cool guys. And they said, Pastor Mike, 
can you give me a word i said sir in your entire lifetime you never even touched the bible the man fell on his knees and said who told you i said the holy spirit told me listen to me some of you never have touched the bible you don't know who's who's zechariah you you're thinking he's your lost uncle or something yeah that's how people are zechariah is not your lost uncle from mangalore okay yes you don't know the word you don't know the word i one day asked a lady i said open the acts of the acts of the bible acts of the acts of the apostles and she went to genesis i said really god have mercy on me please listen to me from today onwards you'll make it a decision lord i want to know you everyone say lord i want to know you and how will you know him you will take your lamp your lamp is what your lamp is the bible the word of god you will read something out of it and i tell you within this 2020 you will grow even more closer to the lord church jesus didn't die for a job did jesus didn't die for a life partner jesus died so that you could be with him always it's not about a job because can you lay hand on me just can you prophesy oh yes i will but the truth and the crux of the matter the foundation is the word of god say it everyone the word of god hallelujah but i want to tell you this even if you don't like me i'll still share what you want to need to your you need to grow in the word of god lift your hand and say lord give me an understanding of your word open my eyes oh god to see wondrous things from your word you know who prayed like that his name was david what what made that guy to say like this man because he knew that if he has to be alive the next day he needs something greater than his enemies he knew that if he is going in battle he has to come out i want to tell you you will not only come out you will prosper hallelujah i'm a man of god it will happen in your life people are talking that you pack your bags and leave no you will not pack your bags you will prosper in the name of jesus lift your hand and shout your biggest hallelujah today hallelujah you're not going into battle and get cut and all come out you're going to be victorious you're going to have a testimony and how it's going to happen that's why david says your word o lord say it everyone your word o lord makes me wiser than my enemies you may be a simple woman you may be a woman who's never gone to a school i want to challenge you church do not give up you may be confused but when the word of god gets inside of you you will be on a different level hallelujah the the virgins everyone say the virgins they went to meet the bridegroom how did they go with the lamps with the lamps i was talking to a to a young scientist i was talking to a young scientist in america i'll not take his name i'll not tell you from which state he's a young boy a mangalorean boy he's a scientist in usa and uh he called me the other day and says pastor i'm having problems i need to take admission in so and so thing he's a young scientist he's not a peon he's a scientist and he was talking to me in konkani he says brother magne karne i said hey what are you going to do by taking that admission he says i want to get settled and i want to have a good girl and a, you know and get married i said really i said with all your education your marriage can fail did you read the bible he said pastor why are you saying like that i said you can be successful and make a mistake like never before but when you have the word of god inside of you you will succeed <laughs> you will succeed lift your hand as i will succeed hallelujah in jesus name let me go to the third point right now they went out said everyone they went out to meet the bridegroom now go to verse 2 quickly verse 2 matthew 25 verse 2 hurry up now five of them were wise and five of them were foolish when the bible calls you wise and the bible calls you foolish you better listen to it what is the factor What is the characteristic that the Bible used to demark a person as wise and foolish? Watch this. What is the thing that separates the wise and the foolish? Watch this. There were 10. And 5 the Bible says wise and the 5 the Bible says foolish. Why? Watch this. Go to verse 3. Those who were foolish took their lamps but took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now when you have the word and you don't have the holy spirit it makes you religious. 
it's like don't do this don't do that if you do that you'll go to hell do 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 it's always your religious the pharisees how many of you know the pharisees had the word but they did not have an understanding of the word the pharisees had the word but they didn't have the power of the word you see if you have the word and if you don't have the holy spirit in your life you are just a talker you only have the word you will tell people you know jesus he heals the sick you know jesus he raises the dead you know jesus he walks on the water and the, and this man comes and says okay you told me jesus heals the sick raises the dead casts out demons do it and show me and you will not be able to do it you tell your son baba believe believe god will give you a job he says okay mama prove it to me and you can't do it because you only have the word right now you need the holy spirit also <sighs> what transformed ordinary fishermen into mighty apostles it was the holy spirit what can transform a maid servant into a mighty woman of god it is the holy spirit lift your hand as a holy ghost hallelujah lift your hand lift your hand as a holy spirit come what can take an ordinary young boy and make him into a, a nation shaker it is the holy spirit it is the holy spirit that's where wisdom lies that's where wisdom lies is you, you may say oh i've got my degrees thank god for the degrees but you need that extra anointing that's the difference between when god calls it wise and foolish the wise depend on the strength of the holy spirit and the foolish depend on the strength of the arm what will make those gates iron gates open for you what will make those iron gates open for you those ancestral iron gates which are not allowing you to move i wish i could talk to you you those ancestral iron gates which are not able for you to move beyond a certain limit do you know the devil puts limitations on you he will tell you you can go this much but you cannot go that much because if you go that much you'll be a problem for me you can draw a salary of 5500 but you cannot go beyond 7000 ancestral barriers today what will break those ancestral barriers it is the holy spirit it is the holy spirit when that anointing comes on you nobody in your family did masters you will amen you will nobody nobody did this thing nobody did that thing pastor mike but me my son my daughter they did it why because the anointing came on you you can be so talented and yet be miserable something needs to break over your life lift your hands and say holy spirit help me today and if you continue to depend on the holy spirit daily the bible calls you wise everyone say wise wise There are people who have the word and they fight and argue with the word and then there are people who don't have to argue the holy spirit talks for them may the holy spirit talk on your behalf to your to your boss to somebody out there and the guy will say i don't know why i'm stamping this paper i don't know why i'm giving this guy the contract but something is telling me to bless this man let it be you who receive it somebody hallelujah that's the holy spirit working for you he goes before you he is after you he circles you you were, were supposed to die in that road accident but you came out like arnold schwarzenegger you told the people i'll be back hallelujah raise your hand and shout hallelujah yeah, that's the holy spirit brother that's the holy spirit we have a church of thousands of people yes that's the holy spirit I've heard testimonies where the car rolled three times and the guy came out and said pastor not a scratch on me I said thank you that's not that's not your car that's not your airbags it's the holy spirit How many say amen to that not a scratch brother not a scratch The second thing I want you to touch two people and say wisdom is in knowing the holy spirit You know this same mother mary same mary she said Okay, what you're saying is good but how is it going to happen and he says the power of the highest shall come upon you and that which i spoke will happen in your life please listen you can have the word glory be to god but you need the holy spirit every day fellowship with the holy spirit that's why paul the apostle wrote he says the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit 
Church, I, I, I want you to understand his truths. I want you to understand his truths. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. First, the word. Everyone say the word. Never come to a service. Now, please listen to me. Never go to a service without the word. Then begin your day without the word. The second thing. Wisdom lies in fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. That's the third point. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry. My question is, if all are sleeping, who's crying out? I'll tell you. You see, at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. This was not a man's cry. This was an angelic cry. Now, I don't have the time to go into the details of today. But if you read the book of Thessalonians, the Bible says, when the Lord comes, there will be an angel announcing his arrival. Hello. This was an angelic cry. The third thing is prayer. The first is the word. The third thing, second thing is the fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. And the third thing I want you to bring out over here is prayer. In these last days, there will be a revival of prayer. Everyone say revival of prayer. Many people ask me, Pastor, how do you get that stuff? How do you get those names? How You just speak and things like this. Let me tell you, I'm nothing. But when you spend time in the presence of God, your very words will be His words. Come on. Ah. I'm seriously telling you. I have got Alvin and these people. I'm in a restaurant. I'm talking to people. And I said, your name is so and so. He said, yeah, who told you? And details and, and praying for the sick on the airport. It happens when you enter into the presence of God. Dear mother, don't worry about your children. Seek the face of God. Your children will be mighty. Dear daddy, don't worry about your monies. If God has brought you so far, then he is God who will keep you. Hallelujah. You think you came in your strength over here? You think you came because you were good looking? You think you came because you were smart? No, 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 sir. There are smarter people. There are better people than you. But God saw something in you. And that's why he brought you so far. I've got good news for you. You are going to go further than this. But what's going to keep you there? Functioning and ticking. It's prayer. Everyone say prayer. Can I offer to you one thing? Midnight prayer. At midnight, there was a cry. You see, when the whole world is sleeping, you will pray. I did a teaching on midnight prayer. I met many prophets of God. I met many servants of God, apostles and mighty men of God. And I asked them, what is the secret of prayer? And they said, praying in the night. And you come in prayer in the night. When you come in prayer in the night for a few minutes and then you sleep, God will start speaking to you in dreams and visions. Hallelujah. God will start giving you direction. Because when you get up in the morning, you're too sleepy. You're too, 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 too. You're in a hurry to go. You can't wait upon God. But in the silence of the night, God will speak to you. A cry. When everybody's sleeping, there's a cry in the night. And, and it's a call of God. And who responded to it? It was the wise people who respond to it. How many times you slept and you just woke up for no reason, feeling fresh? It's a call to prayer. It's a call to prayer. You see a wife and children sleeping so peacefully. Can you lift your hands and say, Thank you, Lord. Look at my wife and children. They're sleeping so peacefully. Isn't it beautiful? And you're saying, Look at this guy. He's sleeping so peacefully. And Lord, why did you wake me up in the middle of the night? At three o'clock, he woke you up for prayer. You see your children sleeping all like this. Those babies of yours. Sister, the Lord woke you up for prayer. My brother, the Lord woke you up for prayer. Will you answer his call? That because of your prayer, your husband will enter into that place that he always desired to. That your children the gates of, of glory, the gates of those doors of those colleges will open for them just because the mama prayed. Will you listen to the cry of the Lord? Somebody is receiving this today. Because you prayed, do you know your divorce decree is going to be reversed? Tonight, there are going some decrees going to be reversed in Jesus' name. Can I tell you something? In the night, 
there are decrees made against you by witches and warlocks there are decrees made one day can i share this with you is interesting watch this there was this guy who attended one of my meetings and he refused to come inside my inside the service hall and i knew this guy because when we were kids when we were kids we used to play cricket together please listen to me i'm not lying to you my brother my own real blood brother is here and i told him why don't you come inside he said uh, i'm carrying this power which i received from my father when i meditated over there for 21 days without food he sat on his grave he's a warlock huh, i'll tell you this and the church was on a seven day fast he said if i come inside your hall i lose those demons i said really uh, because you see i was young in those days in uh, in the in the lord in, and i did not know all this stuff he said hum log kya karte hai malum hai you know what we do we sit in the night and chant against christians their marriages should break they should lose their jobs the confusion in their families we do it in the night i i come from a village you guys are all city people you got big big cars hey listen to me i met people who said that man came he said don't i will not come in the evening i'll not come in the day time i'll come in the night there are decrees made against your children there are decrees made against your family members to destroy you 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 you, you fell in love you sang songs you danced everything and now you are at each other's throats why tonight something is going to change i said tonight something is going to change tonight there's going to be a transfer of finances into your life i am serious hallelujah i are you listening right now there's going to be a transfer you see there are legal issues there are going to be a transfer in the spirit in jesus name are you iranian no problem i was in london and one iranian lady came and she said for so many years this warlock told me to put something in my bath water and take bath she say i cannot stay in my house i said this is the problem with you she says pastor who told you he said do it in the night iranian lady in 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 uk anybody knows what i'm talking about alvin okay iranian lady in uk she said, put some put this powder in your bath and take it in the night there are decrees made against you in midnight so the first thing is the word everyone say the word say it loudly the word the second thing fellowship with the holy spirit say it everyone fellowship with the holy spirit now you ignore these principles it's your story not mine but if you listen to these principles i come next time you will have a testimony oh you will have a testimony in the name of jesus i'm serious you will have a testimony the third thing is prayer can you spend a few minutes in prayer before you go to sleep and if the lord extends it let it be extended you will not spend time on whatsapp you will not spend time on youtube or social media you will spend time in prayer how many of you receiving this word you are not going to end the day with the whatsapp mobile on your on your chest like that no 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 say something is changing okay after 11 o'clock it's going to be nd everyone say no device i'm teaching you management principles man i've spoken to ceos across the world and after a time listen to the ceo no device everyone say no device said everyone no device there are some ceos whom i'm mentoring they say pastor my after you telling me i don't even carry my phone in my bedroom but christians will not listen at least some of them there are people who are making millions they will listen they're listening to the word of god but christians to whom belong the inheritance they don't listen first is the word second is the fellowship of the holy spirit the third thing is prayer everyone say pray you can't get up at 10 o'clock in the morning and say hallelujah raba baba baba it's going to be daba 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 decrees everyone said decrees do you know david he says oh lord you speak i get up in the night and i will worship you 
some of you before you sleep you'll pray some of you the lord will wake you up in the night it may be 15 minutes it may be 20 minutes it depends on your hunger and you'll get up with wisdom you'll get up with knowledge you'll god will speak to you in dreams and visions is this a word from heaven yes it is do you know the master paul apostle paul he was a man of prayer he was in the jail he and paul and silas were in the jail they were in jail and they were beaten publicly humiliated on the streets of jerusalem and they were at midnight in the jail what was paul and silas doing they were not crying oh god where are you what have you done and look at me i i did everything for you and they were worshiping god at what time sir at midnight and something happened the bible says there was an earthquake it was not a natural earthquake it was not in jerusalem it was only in the prison and the bible says oh, everyone's chains were loosed because of your prayer may the chains over your family members be loosed hallelujah read your bible it says everyone's chains whose chains not only paul and silas everyone's chains were loosed and the bible says and the all the doors were open may doors open for you today in jesus name can i tell you a secret we don't know the time of the lord when he'll come but bible scholars say it could be in the night when people are not prepared don't know we don't know the time we don't know the date we don't know what time because it says the lord will come when many are not prepared and the last one my fifth point can i finish it this is a warning for the church and the bridegroom comes watch this please listen to this the bridegroom comes and those who have the oil and the lamp they go inside and those who only have the word they remain outside how many of you know that we know that right it speaks about the rapture jesus is going to escape with his bride what a beautiful story it's in the bible tell your neighbor i know you you are making that face because you don't read the bible i want to finish with this there's a time coming when the holy spirit will take away the church the real church i did not say denomination never criticize any church because those who believe in jesus christ who follow his word live by his principles that's the real church whichever denomination black white green pink blue whatever you're the church now how many were taken away and how many were left behind no hey you're not reading a bible see you're not reading a bible come on tell me how many were taken away sandeep five how many were there ten how many how much percentage is that you pass okay thank you 50% of the church is going to be left behind how much of the church is going to be left behind 50% it's a scary thought and that's the church that's going to, many people fight is it going to be pre tribulation post tribulation mid tribulation they're all fighting but the truth is majority of the church is going to go through tribulation this is the reason why this is the reason why please listen carefully tell your neighbor be prepared today my hands are clean my hands are clean pastor mike why are you saying that one day will come when you cannot point a finger at me before the lord and say this man he is to come to dubai once in a while he did not tell me i have sh- not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of god paul says i have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of god today i openly have told you this is the whole counsel of god every day pray say lord prepare my family this is one of the prayers you must do every day pastors leaders if you are in any church lord prepare my church prepare my ministry for your coming i pray for my family every day lord prepare my family prepare our ministry prepare our church for your coming this is a warning Ma- many of the churches members people are going to get caught up in prosperity got going to caught up in this prosperity is needed but it's not the end jesus is the end of our salvation hallelujah May the Lord speak to you may the Lord bless you don't get caught up in the life so much that you miss out on the realities of God I believe in miracles I believe in healing I believe in the prophetic but the biggest miracle is salvation the salvation of the soul have you surrendered your life to Jesus are you living for yourself are you living only for the Lord or you're living in the world today if you have not lived, lived your life for the Lord if you've not surrendered your life to God please as I begin my prayer right now as i begin praying for you will you just stand up how many of you today you're saying yes pastor i heard this word and i want to surrender my life i'm far away from god 
I want you to stand up at the count of three. One, two, three. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. I make you the Lord of my life. I have nothing to offer you, O oh God. I have nothing to offer you, O oh God. But I surrender my life to you. But I surrender my life to you. Jesus. Jesus. My Lord and my Savior. My Lord and my Savior. My God and my King. My God and my King. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you for shedding your blood. I receive you, Jesus. I receive you, Jesus. Forgive me. Forgive me. Lift your hands right now. Just lift your hands. Many years ago, I made this prayer. I want to be honest with you. I didn't see angels. I didn't see bells. But yes, I got divine peace. That day, I was supposed to commit suicide. Nobody knows in my family. From that day onwards, I started sharing the gospel everywhere. Tonight is your night. God is going to change your story. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a shout of praise and say hallelujah. Come on, somebody.